guys, considering recent events, well, I'm talking about the coronavirus, all mankind is more and more likely to stick itself up its ass, and the apocalypse really seems inevitable. But there is also good news. Some of you will probably survive, and you will have to somehow exist in this post-apocalyptic world, eat something, sleep somewhere, and most importantly, move around somehow. Therefore, today I suggest that we reflect on this topic. Which transportation is best and most importantly safer to move around in different variations of Doomsday? To begin with, let's imagine that people have turned into zombies. No, not into those who watch news channels from 6 to 10 pm. I mean those who would appear due to the fact that some scientist assholes would have come up with a deadly virus that would make people begin to eat each other. As we've all seen in the movies about zombie apocalypse, you can move around on horseback, on a motorcycle, in a Hummer or some other SUV, on chick cars like a Mustang or by train. So with regard to horses or other animals, yes, there's no doubt that you will succeed in secretly moving around, but for the time being, until they finally find you. Well, or while you're taking a leak, evil zombies will bite your transportation, which will eventually gobble you up by itself. Motorcycles. Yes, of course they are mega cool. But believe me, The Walking Dead will not appreciate it. And even if you succeed to freaking beautifully ride your iron horse past a crowd of zombies, and the sexy zombie cheerleader will notice you, and you'll make her mouth water and she'll start drooling with saliva and all kinds of shit, what's the point? You won't be able to get laid with her anyway. As for the rest, it's not entirely safe to ride on open transportation. This also includes convertibles and unicycles. On the latter, you can kill yourself even before the zombies catch you. Well, of course, if you haven't watched the video on how to ride the unicycle. So, then we have SUVs. Yes, there's no doubt that you'll be safe inside, and you can fasten all kinds of weapons and stuff outside. So you shouldn't worry about being eaten for as much as 30 minutes. Then you will probably run out of gas, and that's all, folks. Your ass is grass. The same applies to mega cool cars. They're pretentious like a motorcycle, burn gas like SUVs. Even zombies eat brains slower than these cars drink gasoline. Well, the train. The most important rule when choosing a train is do not take the one that goes to Busan. And make sure that there are no infected people on the train. And that's it. You can travel on such a train forever, sometimes stopping to switch a point or buy some fish and beer from a granny. They're immune to zombies. But this won't work if the apocalypse arises because of artificial intelligence, which will create a rise of the machines. In this case, you'll have to abandon everything with electronics. Well, actually, any machines. In such a post-apocalyptic version, it's better to move on foot, and very carefully, and hide more often, since cars and robots will catch up with you or destroy you right from the spot. But at least they'll have to look for you, and they don't like it at all. Well, my grandson from the future told me. Next, a post-apocalypse which no one knows where it came from. Well, it's the one where only the desert is around, and people are trying to kill each other like fierce savages for fuel and other resources that are needed for their cars, which they made from shit and sticks, well, from any stuff they could find. And the cars turn out to be very frightening. In this case, if your hands grow out of your ass, this is only better for you. Then you will definitely make some kind of weird stuff that will be smashing everything and everyone. Yeah, just make sure to make it powerful, because the carnage will be cruel. What about nuclear bombs? In this case, who cares which transportation you choose? Just make sure to get yourself a radioactive suit and ride anything you want, even a unicycle. Again, if you know how to ride it. Otherwise, you will certainly not die from radiation. Well, what about natural disasters? Floods, earthquakes, that kind of stuff. Here, of course, SUVs will do. What? There's no one to be afraid of. Refuel and drive on. Here you need to worry more about the off-road performance. So amphibious vehicles or hovercrafts are also ideal. And in the end, which vehicle is more or less ideal for any of the doomsday options? I've got an answer for you. Ta-da! Any old minibus. Well, of course, a little modified. So, off-road performance. Since this vehicle has a huge clearance, it gives no shit about the consequences of earthquakes and geological faults. Well, you can still change the wheels to make it even more off-road. Add a winch in front and back and, oh, lead the exhaust pipe to the top. 
so that you could pass water obstacles. You don't really need to do anything with the body. It's already made of thick metal. Or you can put metal plates with holes instead of glass windows, spikes on the sides, and, well, a blade on the front bumper for cleaning snow and zombies. Let's put a machine gun on the roof and the hatch so that you can quickly get to this machine gun. This vehicle comes standard with a four-wheel drive with interlocks and a suspension that you can repair with water pipes and the tape. The interior has nice places for sleeping and space for storing food, water, ammunition and fuel. And, of course, doors that can be locked on a latch from the inside. If something happens to the engine, it can be easily repaired with improvised means. And most importantly, there's access to this engine from the passenger compartment. And this minimizes the situation when you need to leave the vehicle. Well, if there are problems with fuel, in the future you can change the engine and put a solar battery on the roof. Here you go. The vehicle for all kinds of post-apocalypse is ready. The only negative is that it may not start at any moment. But whatever happens, just put some protective charms on the dashboard. And off you go. Well, that's all for today. It was Brock from Broccoli Academy. And thanks for watching. Well, guys, as you probably already guessed, in the comment section I expect from you your options of transportation and, most importantly, for which post-apocalypse it'll be ideal. Also, like the video, subscribe and share.